Apple chat for those of you who join me every week. You know the drill. Let me know where you are joining from so we can see where this little global party is going. Um, you know that we were off last week for Thanksgiving and the week before, it was a crazy little travel thing. So I guess I, I owe you that story first before we get into why we are here. And um, if, you're, if you've already forgotten why you were here, what is wrong with you? <laughs> You're spacey like I am. Um, we're going to talk about what to pack in your travel wellness kit today. But first, oh, let me make sure I've got the chat on so I can see where everybody is coming in from. And so, um, like, uh, what? It's already on. Oh, it's on. Oh, yeah. You right guys are my director. <laughs> he's, he's, okay. I actually, to tell you the story of what happened the week before Thanksgiving, um, I have a very special guest. You never know when he's going to pop in and join us, ladies and gentlemen, my husband, Seamus Dever. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I just finished a workout. Like, and when this, I, is, when this I, is also our gym. This is our, like, literally, like, my gym. he was doing crunches on the floor about 30 seconds but ago. But it finished. Good. You know, I'm proud of you. I'm in fat burn. That's weird. That's weird. Okay. So wait, let's see. Where is everybody coming? We've got Patricia here from LA. Andy's hey. coming in from Indiana. Meredith from Beaumont, California. Okay. So let us know in the chat where you are watching from. And we will get to the travel wellness kit situation uh, story. Let's see. Chili, Chili AF Chicago. Hey, Sandra. Um, yeah. Ooh. How's our video look, everybody? He's, I added a couple lights. He's really proud of it. I think we look really good. Look at this. We look really good. Okay, the video's working. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, all right, before we get, again, to the wellness, let's talk about what happened. So um, I went to... Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> Went to Atlanta. <laughs> Gross. What? <laughs> uh, I went to the state. The state of Georgia. You guys, I have been to the country of Georgia five times. I have never been to the state of Georgia. Why did I go to the state of Georgia? Why did I go to the state of Georgia? I was doing a job there and I was like, it would really be fun if Julie came out to visit me and she finally went to the state of Georgia. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. I am going to do that. I want to, you know, we don't like being apart. And uh, so I got on a plane and first of all, and I was going to talk to you guys about this also, and maybe it's another show, so mm. I won't go too deep into it, but um, just kind of how you set yourself up for travel success and kind of having that travel mindset because I got to the airport and there was a mechanical and, you know, I'm really grateful that, that pilots don't like to fly when their engines are broken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we waited around for a couple hours, got on the next flight. I was flying uh, on United, so I had a connection. And once I got to Denver, I the other flight had already left, so I had to spend the night in Denver. And um, so it felt like I was going to the country of Georgia because it took 24 hours to get all to the get way to there. The state of yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, and uh, Liz, everybody likes your uh, video production. Thank you. There Thank you. you. I worked hard at this. Hi, Pia. Pia's joining us from Sweden. Hi, hey. Pia. Hello from Sweden. <laughs> too sweet too sweet so we're if, let's just let's let's just cut to Seamus went to work he was working on a tv show in atlanta yeah the new tv show yeah what happened i i worked a couple days on there had a couple crowd scenes about mm -hmm. like 50 background artists around us a couple days there uh indoors one of the days mm -hmm. you, i think you see where this is heading mm -hmm. um because like <laughs> they they test you they test you for COVID, but do they test you and prevent you necessarily from working that day? No. Um, so uh, my very last day, I thought it was allergies. I was feeling sick. I took a antigen test that morning. I was negative. I showed up to work. I took a, uh, a PCR test at 6 a.m. They let me work the entire day on this show feeling sick too feeling sick because you were and, sneezing and coughing on and me being like everybody like it's just my allergies i took a COVID test this morning it's just my allergies hey let me get in this hot because it was like 20 degrees out there in atlanta and we were outdoors let me get in this this van with six other actors let's just close the doors just to keep all that heat in there and whatever seamus is feeling right now let's just keep it all in there and then, um, yeah, like eight o'clock at night, we're leaving the next You've morning. You've already wrapped. I've already wrapped. The episode's over. The episode. We're checking in. I get a, I get a text. Ah, oh, you tested positive for COVID. <laughs> tested positive for COVID. <sighs> yeah. 
was not kept from working. No, worked that entire last day. And uh, was not kept from probably being got a few around sick. your wife. Yep, and I got my wife sick, but I was like, Julie, go home. She wasn't feeling it yet. Go home. I you was go like, back to LA. Go back I'm to like, LA. I'm look, I've traveled the world for two years and not gotten COVID. So clearly I'm a superhero. So she took a test and, and she was I, negative. I was negative. So she's like, okay, I'm gonna go home. I really like, wanted to stay because I felt like I needed to take care of you. Which was very sweet, but I was like, you're gonna get sick in this hotel room because that's so and I also wanted so. to rescue our dogs who really don't like not being around us. Damn so it. I went ahead and took the flight home. I was great for a couple days. Mm -hmm. And then you were not allowed to come home. So he had to stay in Atlanta. An extra five days. Extra five days um, on, on Thanksgiving day. And on the sixth day, I was allowed to leave. That yes. was the thing. Yeah. So and, uh, and on Thanksgiving, a week on ago. The, on Thanksgiving, <laughs> yeah. I'm home by myself with the dogs. And all of a sudden I'm like, eh. I'm starting to feel a little weird. I take a COVID test. Guess what? You know. Yeah. Tested positive. So I sat home alone on Thanksgiving with the dogs and watched uh, The Vow. I don't know if you guys have watched the next scene documentary, <laughs> but. And now she's obsessed with the next I'm kind of obsessed with this documentary now, or this group. Anyway, not so the I had, to, I had to hang around a couple of extra days, and then, um, and then I took another test, and then I was able to travel. Uh, on the sixth day and I'm home and uh, I've been home for several days and we've both been just sort of isolating, figuring out how to deal with COVID yeah, and, and so everything. I don't recommend this uh, no. sickness. No, I, I don't I mean, recommend any sickness. I was against it for a long time. And now <laughs> I was, I'm, and now I was I'm totally, really against it. I was totally anti-COVID. Just sort of affirmed my belief of not getting COVID. So, but we got it. We got it. So we wanted to share that with you. Um, but we you were know, fully vaccinated. So honestly, fully, vaccinated, fully boosted, boosted and vaccinated. So it wasn't terrible. No. I'm going to say I was much sicker. If you guys uh, follow me at all, you remember I got really sick in Canada when I went to visit him. Yeah. <laughs> that so, was way worse. So maybe Julie's going to stop visiting me. <laughs> <laughs> Bad things happen when Julie visits me on um, a job. So. But yeah, so I, I am grateful that you know, it wasn't terrible, but, wasn't bad. but I am spacey. Yeah. I feel like I have a spaceman floating around inside my head. A little like, Hey guys, what's going on? Like I'm here, but I'm not really yeah. here. So if I Am say I? stupid stuff today, yeah. you blame it on the COVID. Blame it on the COVID. <laughs> blame it on the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, yes. Thank you, Sandra. We, we are okay. We're better. It was, we're, we're we vaccinated. Were just, we were so alone. everything, we did everything right. It's just, it was, you know, boring and kind of like, Hey, let's get sick and everything. And so, yeah. Unless you watch 15 hours of the vow yeah, documentary, catch up on all that <laughs> soccer, all that world cup going on. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's us. That, that was us. That's uh that's what's been happening. That's why we've been a little quiet. That's the COVID um, update. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of you are probably, you didn't even know Seamus was going to be here. Super exciting. Um, but you're also here because you want to you want to hear about how to pack you your own uh, wellness kit and uh, what to pack in it. So that's what I'm going to get to. That's what we're going to talk about. We just want to share a little story with you. And so that's um, my usefulness has expired. No, you're always useful. Okay. I love you. Have a fun okay. time. Oh, you're bye, done. everybody. He's well, done. Bye. My, I'm no longer useful here. I don't know how to pack. You're the expert. <laughs> okay. Um, should I go or should I stay? You can. You, 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 it's up to you. Uh, I'm going to go. Okay. Bye, okay. everybody. <laughs> Have fun with Julie. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Shane. You never know when Seamus is going to pop in. Um, and again, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I don't need to apologize. No apologies are necessary. Don't apologize. I know. But I am a little spacey. So if I say like random things or I forget what I'm saying in the middle of saying it, it's the COVID. Um, but yeah. Okay. So. Today we are going to talk about the Travel Wellness Kit, and I've been a huge proponent of this for a very long time for multiple reasons. And um, so first, um, you know, you, and it also, you want it to be lightweight. You don't want it to take up too much space. So I'm going to tell you not just what to put in it, but how to pack it so that it doesn't take up too much space. Um, so does anybody, do you already have, does somebody have Travis, tra <laughs> the COVID? <laughs> do you already pack a, a wellness kit? If you do hit like, um, if you're excited about learning more, hit love. Let's know how everybody fleshes out here. Um, I'm interested in seeing, I'm sure a lot of you do, um, because nobody wants to get sick. Um, but, and, and I also feel like the older you get, the bigger the travel wellness kit gets, but yeah, just let me know. Hit like, hit love if you're super excited about this and let's see. Yeah. Lynette does. Hi. Hi, Victoria. Um, <clears throat> I also, a couple things. 
if you want the notes, and I actually have a checklist of what to put in it, but if you want the notes from today's show, make sure at any time you just put notes in the comments so that I, when I go back later, I can find it. And I promise you, I know some people are still waiting on notes from me, um, from the previous show that I did right before I went to Georgia and got COVID. Um, it's coming. Sorry, I've had COVID, so it's been really hard to go back in and focus, but I will get those to you. So I haven't forgotten about you. And if you want the notes and the checklist today, please put notes in the comment. Um, now, also one other thing before we really dig in, you know, and now it's Christmas, so it's even more fun. Um, there's usually a giveaway and today is no exception. I am going to give the winner, today's winner, a set of travel pouches that you can use for your wellness kit and then a couple other things. So how do you win? All you have to do is put the word nugget and then it needs to be a tip that you heard today on the show that resonated with you or that was like an aha moment for you. It's also good because then other people can see it in the comments and maybe you can have a little conversation. But anything that you're like, oh, hey, that's great. Put nugget and then just put a couple words about that particular tip that I said. And then at the end, I'm going to scroll. And everyone who's already gotten uh, prizes for me today, I know Andy's here. I know a lot of people have gotten prizes before. So I send them. I send you your prize. Um, so make sure you put that in the comments as well. So now let's get into, um, I think, I don't know if there's anybody new here today, but if you are, or maybe you're watching on the replay for the first time, hi, welcome. I'm Juliana Dever. I am an experiential travel expert. I've been traveling the world for about 25 years now. I've lived in four countries, uh, including Russia and France. Um, and I spend about, uh, four months of the year or more these days, it seems, traveling around and getting a lot of those expert behind the scene tips so that you can travel off the beaten path and have a more meaningful experience. Um, also, I do have some tours. You can go with me, which is an amazing thing to do. Promise, because first of all, I'm super fun. Um, ask anyone who's been on a trip with me. You might get pulled into a dance party. It, it happens. Um, but also because I've spent so much time making friendships, relationships around the world, you get to spend time with my friends in other countries. You get to travel like a local. You get to see things and do things that you wouldn't do if you went on your own because you wouldn't, you wouldn't know these people. You wouldn't know to go to their house. But you get invited into the homes of locals. You get to eat dinner with them. You get to support a lot of women-owned businesses directly. Um, it's a lot of what I do on my trips. So if you want to travel with me, there's, um, what, there's only one experience left for next year. Um, the rest are sold out. So if you want to travel to Slovenia, that is next August the 14th through the 23rd. Uh, I really recommend you go with me for a number of reasons. One, it was just named by Nat Geo, the, uh, best in the best of the world. So everyone's going to be going there now, but you can still go behind the scenes with me. Um, number two, I'm not doing this tour in 2024. I don't even know when I might do it again. So this might be your last chance. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that this is, uh, I might not do it again. So if you want to go to Slovenia, hurry up and grab one of the remaining spots. Um, I'll give you information about that if you don't already have it. Um, all right. So let's get to the wellness kit. This is uh, near and dear to my heart being sick as I am. Um, First of all, and I want to also stress that I do this, I do a lot of preventative stuff because I have gotten sick over the 25 years that I've traveled. I've gotten sick. My traveling companions have gotten sick more times than I can count. So a lot of this list is based on things that we needed, we ran into, um, that we needed while we were on the road. And um, obviously it's going to be different for everybody. Everybody has different little quirks and ailments. So obviously subtract, add as it works for you. Um, also, this is another thing I don't know if you know, but um, if you're in North America, sometimes, not always, but sometimes our drugs are a little stronger. Um, every year that I go to Europe, I have a, a packing list of things that my um, my friends in Europe need because they say it's just, there's just not as strong there. So you want to have your drugs with you. You know, any OTC, over-the-counter stuff, you want to have the stuff that you know works for you. Second, I can't tell you how many freaking holidays there are that everything is closed and pharmacies are closed at the weirdest times and they're on, it's closed on a Tuesday and it's closed, you know, this week because it's like assumption week or I don't even know the amount of times that I've been miserable and not been able to get 
anything to relieve my symptoms because it's been closed. This is another big one. So make sure you're bringing stuff with you. Um, also, it's not always easy to, to get stuff in other countries. And, you know, it's not like in North America where you just walk into a random store, any store, grocery store, you know, discount store. You have to go to a pharmacy. So this is I just want you guys to know to be prepared to have the context uh, context. Um, let's see. I just make sure Julia and it's super fun to travel with. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yes. Um, I'm just going to put that right up on the board because this is like so super true, Kristen. Um, yes. Traveling like a local is our jam. Well, Victoria, come with me. This is might be your only chance next year. Um, so, OK. First, step one. Get a bag. Um, there are lots of pouches, and I'll show you which one I'm current. I've used two different ones, and some of this depends on where you are going and how remote it is and how many different situations you are going to be in. So, for example, this is uh, this is one that I – this is my standard bag. I don't even ever unpack it. Um, this company doesn't exist anymore. Hashtag sad face, but um, this is a great look at how tiny it is, right? Um, the only downside to this particular bag is that it's canvas. And um, for a while, I was getting like weird uh, uh, canker sores. Um, and um, it, I'm like, of course, my brain is like, well, actually, it was this, it doesn't matter, it's not important. But the canker exploded and ruined the last bag. So if you know you have certain things that are that like you have a few liquids in there, you may want to have um, a waterproof pack. And that's what I'm going to give away today as well. Don't forget nugget and the tip. Um, I'm going to give one that is actually uh, like a plastic type, so that it's water. It's got a waterproof lining because that damaged my bag. Now, when I went to Mongolia and I'm in the Gobi Desert and I'm staying in a in a yurt. You know, there's not a lot of pharmacies. So I had I had a bag that was this big because I just knew I was going to need a lot more things. Um, big traveling pharmacy. It also just depends on, of course, you. So step one, get a bag. Um, yeah, let's see. Trying to figure out the differences, uh, Kristen says, between pharmacy, apothecary, skincare store. Just finding the correct store is hard sometimes. It's super true. It's super true. And they're out. They're just like the hours are impossible. Um, okay. So step two is step two, assemble your drugs, amass your drugs. Okay. And amass your first aid. And for the checklist, for those of you who want the notes and the checklist, I do break it down just to kind of help us, you know, put it in containers, um, but into preventative uh, first aid, painkillers, allergy type stuff, cold flu, and digestive. Because these are all different kinds of things that you run into when you travel. So let me let me give you a little bit of what is on my personal checklist, kind of help you get through it. Um, and uh, <laughs> hey, Rachel, there's Rachel. I remember you. Um, Rachel Leo Cohen is in the house, everyone. Let's see. So preventative. Now this can be, again, this is also what your weird quirk is, like whatever tends to be some of your particular uh, ailments. But um, for me, I have lozenges sometimes, you know, just for your tickly throat. I have, um, now this one's going to be weird. Is this, I think I've actually solved this particular ailment. I, I'm going to check in my bags to show you guys. But I have to tell you, for the longest time, I was having the weirdest mystery illness where my tongue would just like blow up and it would, my tongue would blow up and somehow it would also cause my teeth to hurt. So I had um, dental wax. So if you have, even if you have braces or other sharp issues, like little things like that make the biggest difference because you won't find it where you're going nine times out of 10. So these preventative things are things that you know are your own personal ailments. Um, preventative, maybe like a sleep aid. If you really struggle with jet lag, whatever helps you go to sleep, you maybe want to bring a couple of those the first nights just so that you can actually get some sleep and get into the rhythm. Um, vitamins. Now, here's something else. Um, I never, this is a big one for me, and I, I swear it saved me so much. Um, vitamin C. I take it every single day for years, for years. And I take these kinds. This is um, 
lipospheric, and um, it's the most bioavailable. They're not inexpensive, but it's my health. I mean, I don't know what's more important. So I take these with me everywhere. Um, it's Live On, L-I-V-O-N. See if you can see it. I don't know if it's, yeah. So I take vitamin C. I just take as many as I'm, as many days as I'm going to be gone. I never, ever travel without vitamin C. It's huge immunity booster. Also great for your skin. Um, also, I take my my personal concoction of supplements and vitamins. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit more because I also never travel without these little Ziploc baggies. Um, so I just have it for the day. So I know for the day, and these make it really lightweight, thin, um, all the all the vitamins that I personally take. Um, there's also, and Rachel's here, she'll also say, um, you know, we have this these wellness drops that we have sworn by in the past. And that is, it's usually, it's like a, an herbal concoction. So it's, you know, if that sort of thing, taking wellness drops every day, building your immunity, whatever, because, you know, travel is stressful. You're, you're hurtling through the sky in a little metal tube. You're changing eight, 10, 12 time zones. You're suddenly in different air, different pollution. You're, you're not sleeping. You have different food, different absorption of vitamins and minerals, what you're used to. So travel is is not easy on your body. So being preventative, whatever those wellness drops are for you, I hugely recommend keeping up with it. Don't just, you know, it's not like you're on a vacation from being healthy because who wants to get sick when you're traveling? I mean, it's something apparently I professionally do now. Um, and I also, um, for the longest time, I had oregano oil and true story, I had um, strep throat while I was at a, um, while I was doing something in Northern California and I took my wellness drops and like mega dosed oregano oil. And in two days, my strep throat was gone. Whatever. Yeah. So it's up to you, but I highly recommend preventative items. Um, so now the number two in the amass your drug section, the number two category is first aid. Now, again, this is a lot of, you know, how you, what you do, how, you know, what, you might be prone to, but I usually always bring hydrocortisone um, because it's a multitude of itching. Um, sometimes I also bring tape. I'm trying to see what's in, if I, what's, oh yeah, like tape, like this kind of stuff. Like again, if you're going to the Gobi Desert, <laughs> you don't know, like, are you gonna be, cut your finger on a camel saddle? I don't know, but you've got the ability to put gauze, no matter if it's a burn, if it's, you know, so I, I bring stuff like this when I know I'm going somewhere a little more off the beaten path. Um, I've also brought like even these little finger cuts. Again, this is for when you're going off the beaten path, but you don't want to be like making yourself dinner and then cut your finger and then, you know, bleed all over everything. So sometimes I get super first 80. Um, Let's see what else. Definitely bandages, things like that, like uh, um, blister protection. That's what Rachel was saying in here about uh, Compede. These things, I don't know if you've seen these before. I don't, there is not a better blister protector on the market. And I don't know if we can get these in the US. I usually get them um, in the UK. I load up on them, but they're really amazing because they're padded so that they, and they also don't stick to your blister and they're clear. Amazing. Um, Let's see what else. Um, any kind of antiseptic pain reliever, obviously. This is a good time to go to that section at your local, uh, like your Target or whatever, and get the um, travel size, the small size, like Neosporin. Just kind of spray on anything, any cuts, any scrapes. Um, the gauze squares, burn relief. I do usually keep a couple of those with me too, because I don't know, like... What if you're making s'mores and you accidentally burn your hand? Important. Um, let's catch up on these really quick before I go to the next section. Uh, got lots of good nuggets. What is good in Germany? We have pharmacies that give good advice. Um, yeah, that's actually, as I have big problems in other countries to find medications that suit me. You know, and that's one thing that I do really appreciate in Europe. The amount of times that I have had an illness where I... I go to the pharmacy and I talk to the pharmacists themselves and, and pharmacy, like pharmaceuticals in Europe are like 
nine euro. It's crazy. So they'll give me, you don't need to go to a doctor to get a prescription. That is good. Um, sometimes it hasn't entirely worked. I, I once had um, chicken pox and I was in Austria and trying to explain it. I was do I was trying to show them and also do charades. And sometimes they just stare at you. And sometimes you get a pharmacist that either does not speak English or maybe the it's limited because you're talking about pretty, you know, like advanced concepts. It can be a challenge. I mean, do your best. If you're sick, you got to do what you got to do. But um, let's see. Do you leave prescriptions in the bottle or a pill case? Uh, Patricia, I will get to that. Um, what about repacking pills? Yeah, let's, um, that's going to be that is going to be in uh, the number three tip, but I just want to walk work through this really quick. I love these questions. Um, thoughts on charcoal pills? You know, Kristen, I go back and forth on them, um, and here's why. And this is um, kind of in the more in the digestive section, but um, I have been, I personally have had god awful um, food poisoning. I just got it again with Rachel. Um, she came out unscathed. Um, I got it again in Montenegro and I've had it before. And I also was, I was staying way up in the Andes in, um, in Argentina and my travel companion got awful food poisoning. And I think she happened to have charcoal pills with her and it saved her. And every time I have that experience, I vow to pack more things for, for that situation. So I'm, I'm totally, I, I've, I've had them before and it's helped. It's actually helped quite a bit. So if you are someone who is concerned about food poisoning or the after effects of food poisoning, I would absolutely throw that in. Um, Rachel came across something really good for digestion. And I can't remember now I have to look it up again. Um, it's called the virusin. If you can see, I don't know if you can see that virusin. Um, we were taking it one day before a meal, we were going somewhere kind of out there and we wanted to make sure that our stomachs adjusted and it seemed to help a lot. I don't know, Rachel, if you're still here, if, what was it? Um, what did you, do you remember what the virus and did it or if it was great? Did we love it? Um, put it in the comments so I can find it. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about the other, the, the, the five categories of medications to bring with you in your wellness kit. Again, we went over preventative first aid. Um, painkiller allergy, I would say again, like if you just have aspirin or ibuprofen, those Tylenol, those things, I would do not travel without Benadryl though, for God's sakes. The amount of thing, like Benadryl is a catch all. My nurse friend, Crystal, every time I call her from all around the world, whether I've had my forehead swell up, a bit, I've had an allergic reaction, I've had a couple things happen. She's like, please just take a Benadryl. Please just take a Benadryl. So that one is a nice catch all. Um, and then cold and flu, and this really even helped me catching COVID in uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, um, getting the Dayquil, NyQuil. And I can promise you, they don't have anything like that in Europe because I have to bring so many containers of it to Europe every year for my friends that live there. So that's, um, that's another great one. It kind of knocks out any of those symptoms so you can get through the day. As long as you don't have COVID, you can still go on with your tour. Um, but any of those, the daytime, nighttime, and it also helps you sleep at night, maybe actually get some quality rest. I also personally, I have sinus issues. So like a Sinutab or a Sudafed is super helpful in that category. Um, the cold and flu category. And then the final one, and let me make sure I'm not missing you guys. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda's here from Missouri. Virus in. Yeah. Rachel, do you remember that? Um, you remember we took that and I feel like. Oh, and I also know what happened is uh, when I went to get a facial, when I came back, my facialist was like, oh my God, you have no yeast filled up on your face, which is something almost all of us have. We don't know it because it's a bit microscopic. And that was preventing any kind of yeast buildup, um, that virus in. So, you know, I take things and then I kind of forget about them, but um, I think that's what it was. Um, yeah. So let's see, pack something for stomach issues. You got it. Yeah. Bring the day and night, night will and the final category is stomach, which is what uh, Lynette was just saying. And this is a host of things. Like if you get um, motion sick easily, I would definitely bring whatever motion sickness types of medications work for you. There's a, there's a couple different ones. Like, so for instance, um, ginger, I pack a ton of ginger candies because, and just, you know, those ginger chews, they're not, 
they're straight up ginger. They're not really candy. Um, it's hugely helpful. And that is not available in a lot of countries, surprisingly. I, for some reason in my head, I thought, oh, I'll just go to, when I go to Georgia and we're driving in the mountains, like, oh, I'll just get some ginger at a grocery store. No, they don't have it. Um, if you are Canadian, you know about uh, amazing gravel. So this is, it's gravel, isn't it? I like to say it fancy. It's gravel. Um, it's gravel. It's just like ginger candies, uh, not can again, lozenges. Um, so motion sickness for some people also, they take, um, oh, you know, you, if you, if you take it, you know what I'm talking about. It's the, um, there, there's one that, that you take before you get on a boat. Um, I can't, I can't think about it. Um, uh, but then, and then there's a secondary one, which I actually prefer because you have to, for the first one, it is escaping me. I promised I told you I would be a little cloudy because I still have the after effects or the effects of COVID. Um, and then let me see if I have it in here. Um, Dramamine. Thank you, Trisha. Hey, Trisha. Thank you. <laughs> Trisha's here from Ohio. Reminded me of important things I need. Um, Dramamine, yeah. And so there's the, there's another one. It's called meclizine. And the reason that I prefer that, and this was I was on a um, I was on a small boat in uh, outside of Panama, going to Gunayala, which is a bit remote. And the it was the worst, the worst, the like like you couldn't even stand up without falling. Like you had to strap yourself to your bed. It was high seas. And meclizine actually is uh, dramamine where it's prophylactic. Meclizine, actually, you can take it while you're experiencing those symptoms and it interrupts them and it actually starts to reverse them. Where dramamine is something you just need to take beforehand. And dramamine knocks me out. I can't use it. Like, I, there's, I might as well just not do it because I'm asleep somewhere. So, um, but whatever motion sickness works for you, I think, like, so back to our category of the stomach issues. Um, you know, if, if, if there's chewable antacids, if that kind of thing works for you, make sure you pack it. Um, Peptabismol, you know, these are, they're all doing slightly different things and you know your body. So bring those things. And also, yes, anti-diarrheal. If you have, um, um, what is it called? It's on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> um, I always keep that too for people, for anybody. Cause I also, I'm a sharer, so I share out of my bag, but if you, uh, pack those as well, make sure you have anti-diarrheal. That's especially if you are, you should get food sick, food poisoning. Um, so, and also another one, if you get food poisoning, hydration tablets, like, um, because you will become dehydrated. And even when you're somewhere super hot, like when I was again, hiking in the jungles of Panama, that it was extraordinarily hot and you think well water's enough in fact you can get dehydrated by drinking a ton of water if you don't have hydration you need the magnesium you need the different um the different things the minerals that are in here so that the water actually stays in your body otherwise you might just start flushing it out so if you um do get food poisoning or if you go somewhere that's super hot and you get dehydrated carry the hydration tablets with you. It's huge. It's key. Um, this one's called noon. If you see it, this one's a noon immunity. Um, but they have, they have all different kinds and they're, you know, it's, it's not that much. You just slide it in, um, into your wellness pack. Um, food poisoning is such a thing, Victoria. <laughs> so those are the five categories. I want to make sure I didn't, um, ear patch from my doctor helps. Yeah. Whatever helps you personally. Um, oh, Trisha Flonase, can you put nasal spray in a carry on you? Yeah, absolutely. You can put any kind of spray that is under three ounces, 3.4 ounces. Actually, if we're talking North American Imperial, I don't know. What is it? 30 milliliters. If you are on the metric, you can carry any of those. I like to try to get the smallest possible sizes so I can get it all in there. So um, if I, if I have a, if somebody asked a question higher up and I missed you, please put it in. Um, yeah, those hydration tag no, no, tablets, you guys for real, for real. Um, okay. So now number three, number three in the wellness kit. Now we've talked about what to pack, what kind of uh, package and then what to put in it. But now let's also talk about how to downsize it to make it so that it doesn't take up too much space. It's not too bulky and it doesn't weigh too much because as Rachel knows, I always say every ounce counts. 
Um, you want, especially if you're team carry on, you want everything to be as light as possible. So a couple of things that I do, first of all, if you have anything that's in blister packs, like your, um, um, the Sudafed, for instance, Benadryl, like pull them out. Like it's already got your information on the back. You know what it is. It's got your expiration date on it. Here's my Benadryl, pull it out. And you mean, and you know, you're like, I'm going to be gone for a week. I'm not going to need 52 of these. Bring one little blister slide, bring what you think you're going to take. Don't overpack, but make sure you're covered. So get the blister stuff out. Um, and put that in. If you can go visit your travel section, I know that's a very North American thing. It's not very easy to find that stuff in a lot of parts of Europe. It depends. It depends on where you are, but there's not always a lot of travel size stuff. Um, I was able to find this uh, Pepto-Bismol, just a tiny little travel size. So they're all nice and stacked in there, nice and compact. Um, and so, yeah, you can find you can find some things that are travel size. If you have um, a travel first aid kit, you know, sometimes people buy those. Um, you can get those at Target or Amazon or whatever. And they have little individual. That's where I got like the little burn pack. Um, so for um, where was that? That was, yeah, like these little things like this burn X, you can get it just in a single good to go package. Um, the number two tip I have for you to downsize and lighten is don't take those, those round jars and containers. Now we're still talking about over the counter, over the counter drugs, not prescription drugs. Um, just get these little Ziploc bags. They're a super lifesaver. Like see the size right here. Um, you can get this it's zippy Ziploc and then just put in however many you of, you know, like a half a little container, like 15 or whatever you think you would take on your trip if you needed it. Now I have, I'm very, um, I, I'm very organized, but this has saved me. I have a label maker. I don't know who else is in love with label makers, but if you have one, um, you can see, look, I put on here, I don't know if it's really, uh, it's not quite focusing. Um, oh, there you go. See, it's like gravel. Um, and then I have the dosage, um, and I have the expiration date. So I know at a certain point when I come to clean out my wellness kit after a couple of years, these are expired and I can just empty this little, you know, Ziploc bag and get a new one. But I do, you can, of course you can write on a Sharpie, but do you know how many times I've grabbed that and smeared it? And then I have no idea when they're expired or if I was supposed to take two or, you know, so if you have a label maker or if you do write on it, maybe just put a piece of tape on top of the Sharpie so that you can't smear it with your fingers. But when you fill up your wellness kit and it's just a lot of, you know, like here's my Advil PM, you know, look at, look at how little space this takes compared to putting all those little childproof jars in here. So this is, a, this is huge for me. And, and I already showed you like vitamin wise, like, you know, I put my daily vitamins. Here's regular, regular Advil. Um, yeah. So that is what I recommend. Love label makers. I know, right? <laughs> Sometimes I'm tempted to label the dogs. It's like, they're just so much fun and you can organize things. Um, yeah. Yep. Sue, the label maker. And, and yes, Rachel, that's exactly right. Like make sure you just put the, the, um, expiration date on there. So, you know, and you know, when they are no longer good. Um, let's see. Yep. The hydration tablets, everything. If you have any questions, please make sure you get them in so I can answer them. Um, yeah, Trisha, she shares my enthusiasm for label maker. <laughs> get a label maker. It's, you know, look, it's the holidays. Is it weird? I don't think so. Put that on your wish list. I'd like a label maker. I, the things that I can actually keep organized just in general. Amazing. Um, okay. So Number four, and this is something, you know what, let me get this and share it with you really quick. I'm going to put this link in the chat right here. Now, again, depending on where you are going, this might be really, this information might be really key for you. So this is um, the CDC travel website, and it's good because you can put in where you're going and you can see what might be going on in that area. If there is an, an additional vaccine that you might need to get, um, this is huge, especially when you're going to places like for me, when I went to South America, um, or Central America, uh, you know, I, I 
made sure I got a prescription for um, an anti-malaria drug. Um, I, at one point I needed a hepatitis vaccine because there was a, a surge in hepatitis. Um, if, as long as it's not unsafe to travel, I don't let it stop me. But I personally don't want malaria. I mean, if you do, you do you, okay? But I am not into it. So the CDC's website on what vaccines to get in what areas, a lot of times it could be like the Zika virus, if you remember. Like there's certain places where mosquitoes are like they are living out a full life and it is party time and you are the appetizer. I am usually. So there's a lot of uh, illnesses that I, I really just don't want. So that is a really great help for making sure that you are vaccinated for things that are very specific to a region. Um, oh, and I know, um, what's the what's the bulkiest thing you'd pack in the aid pack? And you know, um, Sandra or Sandra, I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. Um, in terms of um, prescription drugs, now, a lot of times you need the, there could be a time, and this has not happened to me yet in, 25 years of travel where I have really had to deal with anyone pulling any kind of medication out of my bags and asking me about it. That doesn't mean it wouldn't happen. So if you are taking a very specific prescription drug, you might want to keep that in your container. And that can get bulky. If it's possible to have the label and put that with it and maybe, you know, put it in a Ziploc instead, this, you know, this is going to be your comfort level. Um, anytime I've had a prescription, if it doesn't take up too much space, I just throw the whole bottle in there. If it is, then I, you know, I'll take the, la I'll get the label and put it in something smaller. It just really depends. Or I'll take, you know, I'll take less of it. But that I would try, I personally, I'm going to tread lightly on that advice because I don't know how many prescriptions you need, how serious it is and how much proof you would need. Cause I personally don't have very many prescriptions. So I haven't dealt with it a lot, but I will tell you, I in traveling seriously all over the world. I have not been stopped, um, to inspect my, my wellness bag. Um, but you never know, you get a really fastidious, uh, um, agent at a certain airport. And if you want to be prepared, don't mess with it. You know, hopefully you have a small container or you can downsize it into a container or you can ask at the pharmacy if they can make it into a smaller size and see if they, you know, some pharmacies do, some pharmacies don't. Um, but I do want to make sure I address that. Um, used to vaccine clinics in both DC and Florida. Yeah, they're another good resource. Um, yeah, absolutely, Kristen. Um, check with travel before you, you know, check with the CDC. Absolutely. Like, seriously, I don't need hepatitis. I don't need yellow fever. That's me. I'd rather have a vaccine. Um, okay, so that is um, all things wellness bag, how to pack it, what, like, what to put in it and how to make it as lightweight as possible. Um, don't forget, I haven't done the drawing yet. So if you have any last minute ahas, put nugget in front of it, anything that I said today that was like, hey, Juliana, this is a lot of good information. Go ahead and put nuggets and, and that information. Um, so just to recap, we talked about why you should pack a wellness bag. I hope you do. Like you don't want to waste time. Pharmacies are often closed. They're not always easy. You don't always get a lot of the same types of medications. Sometimes they're better. A lot of times um, it may not have the strength of an over-the-counter drug that you're used to. So just make sure you pack some kind of um, wellness bag when you travel. Um, we also talked about the five categories of drugs for you personally. You put in what you like, but um, it's preventative stuff. It's first aid stuff. It's uh, painkillers and allergy medication, medication, cold and flu medication, and digestive. That's huge. That can be from motion sickness to anti-diarrheal pills to anything that will settle your stomach if you've had something unfamiliar. So these are very important categories to fill according to what works for you. Um, then we also talked about how to downsize it. Um, my number one tip is to pull the blister packs out and just take what you need 
and then get these little, you can get these at your local drugstore, like a Walgreens, a CVS. Of course you can order them online. Um, but these little Ziploc bags are lifesavers for lightening your load and label them. However you label them. I personally love a label maker, but however you label them, make sure that you put the name of the drug, the expiration date, and the recommended dosage. It doesn't even take up that much room. Look, it's, this is two lines and I've got everything I need there. Um, and finally, we talked about finding out what kind of vaccines you need for where you are going to travel. So, and that link I put already in there, that it's the CDC website, so you can find out if there's something going on in that part of the world that you need to guard against. Um, so, let's see, I've got everything, <laughs> don't overpack. That is always the nugget, Sandra, that is, always the nugget um so yeah and make sure if you um and just making sure i didn't miss anybody's stuff um and make sure if you want the notes for today or the checklist so that you just have the checklist for yourself make sure you put notes in the comments um i'm about to pick a winner before that i do want to remind you if you want to travel with me on my my specially curated tour through Slovenia. That is the last opportunity you're going to have in 2023. Everything else is sold out. I don't know if I'm going to offer it again. So um, if you are wanting to go to Slovenia, this is it. This is your chance to go to the country National Geographic has just named best of the world and do it behind the scenes with me. So make sure that, and also the, there's a holiday $200 discount. I was going to end it on Cyber Monday, but because I've had COVID, I didn't have a chance to warn you all. I'm extending it through December the 15th. So there's a few spots left and you can get it for $200 off. This is your last chance. Don't blow it. Don't say someday. Who knows what someday is? We don't know. This is not promised. Just make a plan and have something to look forward to. Come with me. Um, all right, I'm gonna pick a winner now. Uh, yep, Patricia says, don't miss Slovenia. You got it, Sue, and I will, I promise. I know I owe you guys some notes um, I, from the last show, everyone who asked, I'm getting them to you. I haven't forgot, I had COVID. I had to sit on the couch and watch the Nexium documentary for three straight days. It's what happens when you get sick. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pick a winner now. This is when I need Seamus to come back and y'all stop. And, oh, it was on somebody who was just asking a question, okay. Gonna keep going. And the winner is somebody who's asking for notes. See? Nuggets, come on, nuggets, come on, nuggets. <laughs> and it's me in my <laughs> Okay, nuggets. It's never so hard before. Okay, here we go. Victoria, Victoria Hoffman. Food poisoning is a thing. You just won a set of travel pouches. I'm gonna send this to you. Merry Christmas, happy travels. Um, Victoria, you can DM me. I Hopefully you're in the United States um, or it's somewhere that it's easy to get the uh, travel pouches too. If not, just come with me to Slovenia and I'll give them to you in person. So um, DM me your address and I will send that out to you. Um, it's been amazing seeing everyone or talking to everybody. Um, I will have one more show next week and that's it for the season. After that, I'm traveling again and I will tell you next week all the places I'm going, but I will be gone for about a month. Let's hope I don't get sick. Now that I've had COVID, that's off the table. I, I hope, I hope, um, but I will have my wellness kit with me. So hopefully it will all be okay. So next week, um, I'm, I will let you guys know what the topic's going to be. There were so many um, topics that I want to make sure we've got the best one for next week. If you have a topic, you're listening on the replay or now, please put it in the comments, something you want me to address and go over. Um, otherwise, I will see you next week and have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye-bye.